Welcome back to the channel. Today we will be doing final assembly of the individually completed components. I apologize for some of the patched video. This Texas heat is killing my cameras and I didn't realize we were not recording until I finished the process. Regardless, I hope you enjoy the process and enjoy the final reveal. Assembling the base after the parts came back from powder coating. I'm using some food grade grease to lubricate the metal mating components that supposedly move freely like a bearing. I'm then using the mineral spirits to clean up the mess that I inevitably make. The sides of the base are attached with three bolts, flathead of course. I opted not to have each bolt powder coated so it wouldn't mess up the threads and the guy charged $10 a bolt. I used some super blue bluing on these instead and soaked them in some linseed oil for a few days to really rehydrate them. The drive wheel is attached on this drive shaft and held in with a set screw that was lost in time somewhere between me, the powder coater, the gods, whatever. But the snug fit allows it to go unnoticed. The drive shaft is pointed on one side to sit in a meeting cup and bolted on the other end for a friction ride. Again, I applied some of this grease to the mating surfaces. The foot treadle is held in with two pointed set screws that also sit in cups on the treadle itself. Ideally, only one would have been removed to help with alignment later, but we couldn't have them powder coated and stuck into place forever. There was plenty of overspray and lots of the hardware is tight fitting, needed to be tapped out, or in some cases, even drilled out. The treadle is then attached to the drive shaft with this adjustment rod. This bearing that's on the drive shaft I couldn't get off so we had to work around and clean and oil and grease in place. This bushing style bearing fits onto the treadle and swivels with the motion while the rod is threaded into that bearing in the drive shaft. And of course, you have to test the spinning thing out when it's assembled. The adjustment on this rod is a little off. 
I will correct that before delivery. You might be wondering, why am I removing the bolts that I just put in? Well, I am applying some of the softest Loctite to prevent the bolts from seizing in the future while holding over time. This stuff is easily reversible. I am doing this one bolt at a time so that I don't have to completely disassemble the entire thing again. Here I am attaching the belt guides. The front belt guide attaches to a guard to keep your fingy safe. You can see I am tapping it with a brass hammer because of the overspray. And here we have the assembled base. Ta-da! Before bluing and nickel plating the hardware, I let them soak in some evapo rust for a day to help descale the rust. And I threw in this old C-clamp I've been needing to dunk and repair for a while. It is some good stuff, and safe to touch. When it starts losing its effectiveness, just add more. Check it out if you have some parts to get rust free. After the parts came out of the evaporust, I spent time, a lot of time, my back still hurts, on the wire wheel, polishing the parts up to get them ready for the next stages. The hinges were copper plated. I have a magnet on top of my drill press to hold the chuck key. I tapped them on there and sure enough they're magnetic. I opted to nickel plate these since some items were already nickel plated and try to keep everything uniform even though it's not the factory look. Here I am, getting set up to start the reassembly on the sewing machine itself. I apologize that I did not provide enough close-up de detail, but this was my first time and a learning curve. I didn't want to show anyone some of my bad decisions. Like I mentioned in the first video, check out Bob Fowler's YouTube channel if you're experiencing Singer sewing machine issues. He covers all Singer models. Just know, I discovered his channel after this point.
my shop partner, Sunny, she got too hot and we had to take a break in the AC. It was a good time for lunch and a nap and, you know, get some cuddles. I know, I must treat her. After having taken a break, cooled off, taken a nap, and letting my frustration die down, I'm back at it. This lock ring is held in with a roll pin. The lock ring attaches to the drive shaft of the machine and the wheel, the drive wheel, attaches to the lock ring, which then the drive belt will go over and... I'm not recklessly hitting anything with a hammer yet. The base plate is attached with three bolts. Due to the overspray, getting the two parts to mate seamlessly was difficult. I don't want to over tighten the bolts and strip out the cast iron. Here, the undercarriage parts for the shuttle and the feeder are attached to the internals and do their magic. The feed tensioner is released by this wishbone shaped piece held in with a roll pin. The spring sits on the thread tensioner to release all of the tension at once. I could really use one of these for my job. This thread feeder arm thing has to get fished into the cam to ride in a groove that makes it move up and down to continue pulling thread from the bobbin, I think. The machine is fully functional, but I don't know how to operate it. 
Rookie year, like any good reassembly, I am trying to find where these four extra parts go. Spoiler, I figured it out, but I was stumped for a good day. Luckily, I found Bob. I got a new set of decals online, and I will try to find the link and put it down in the description. These apply like those temporary tattoos, but way more expensive than two quarters. Here, we are starting to reassemble the cabinet structure. You can see, despite my efforts, the stain didn't quite blend as well as I hoped. But, the top is just oiled and I will try to blend it better before delivery. Pro tip, I organize these wood sprues in individual cups for their installation applications. I wish I would have done that for all of the bolts and screws and not just after the fact with the wooden components. This would have saved a whole lot of time. This spring assembly is way too easy of a design. I fought with it, trying to make it more complicated than it is. Don't overthink it. No, I'm not kidding. Overthinking is what I do. I had to file the old wheel axles off so I could get the wheels off. I didn't want those powder coated. So I'm having to make new drive shafts or new axles for these wheels. I set up a stop block to cut them a little over length, then heated them up on one end and shaped it to have a kind of a domed lip edge and then quench them in some linseed oil to harden them. I then heated them on the opposite end, drove them through the frame and wheel, and pinned them over in place between two hammers. This step would have been a lot easier in the beginning before I assembled the base, <clears throat> but here we are. And here's the completed assembly. I will get this back to my client soon, and let the next three generations pass down this heirloom. Maybe somebody will remember how to use it by then. Thank you for watching, and please like, share, subscribe.